You did it today. Uh, you did it last week. You, you do it every week. And we bring in people from around this country who need our services, and Kirk never gives up. Never gives up. How many marathons have you run and you never give up? Four. Never gives up. Until he's across that finish line. And tonight he's going to tell you a story about his family. And it's a story that I'm sure many of you also have experienced in some fashion, in some way, with your friends or your family. And it's a very poignant story. Thanks so much for being here tonight. So I'm going to talk about my brother, Kyle. Um, growing up, my younger brother, Kyle, struggled with depression. In the small mid Midwestern town where he, my sister, and I were raised, education about depression and access to treatment services was limited, and people didn't speak of mental illness. It's not unlike many of our communities in rural Vermont. Kyle's first suicide attempt was when he was 14 years old. Upon his return from the emergency department late that night, I slept on the floor of his bedroom to make sure that he was safe. And I vowed that I would always do whatever I could to assure that never happened again. Unfortunately, as so often happens to those without access to early intervention and education, Kyle's depression worsened, and over the next 18 years, he continued to make attempts on his life. Kyle was an old soul and, and he, uh, who, who lived to give others joy. He had an infectious laugh and a wonderful sense of humor. As a father, sibling, son, and friend, Kyle cared deeply for those with whom he was connected. His energy was always extended to others. He brought baked goods to the mentally ill and homeless in the streets of Chicago every day for years. I, I once saw him literally give someone the shirt off his back. Kyle committed suicide three years ago this week, on September 8, 2009. His untimely death came at a period when his life appeared to be on an upward trajectory. His musical career was at its zenith. Between tours with country music star Dina Carter, the 80s rock band Survivor, Dennis DeYoung of Styx, his work with the Chicago Symphony, his extended engagement with the Broadway musical Jersey Boys, and his appearances on David Letterman, Oprah Winfrey, Conan O'Brien, and Jay Leno, Kyle was doing exactly what he had dreamed of since he was four years old, making a living as a professional musician. Outwardly, Kyle lived a life that was exciting and full of joy. Inwardly, he was tortured by his illness, or as he called them, his demons. The, love and the joy and love he expressed for others was not self-directed. Because of his depression, Kyle rarely felt that he was good enough or worthy of the attention and accolades that he received. Six, month, six months before his death, he said to me, you know, I go out on stage every night in front of thousands of cheering people, and I never feel that I'm good enough to be there. Ultimately, Kyle's depression was a terminal illness. There are few things in life more painful than knowing that the right treatment at the right time and in the right place could have saved the life of someone whom you love so much. That's why the Brattleboro Retreat is critically important and how establishing this fund will help provide hope for individuals like Kyle. Part of the retreat's mission statement reads, we provide hope, healing, and safety delivered by expert caregivers. These are essential to getting people through the difficult periods when the diseases of mental illness and addictions dictate the course of a person's life. The retreat helps people find their way to hope so that depression, or bipolar disorder or alcohol dependence don't have to be terminal diagnoses. I'm so proud to, give this, uh, to be able to present this gift to the Brattleboro Retreat in Kyle's name from his family and from the hundreds of people who donated to his memory. In closing, I have a poem that I'd like to read written by Kyle to his son and then a few pictures I'd like to share with you, accompanied by music that Kyle composed and recorded for a CD that he entitled A Child's Dream. First, the poem. You see, my son, I'm just a child, like you, just with more years of searching, learning, laughing, yearning, running from my fears. Only God can be the strength you hope to find in me, and only you can paint the sky with dreams that you may see. Carry on and learn to love the ones you never knew. Find the trail that isn't there and question what is true. 
Looking corners keep a hide with potted plants and fear, and gently slide it toward the light and whisk the corner clear. Be the man you wish to see, reflected before bed, and feel my love each night before you rest your weary head. May Kyle's spirit and the love he shared with all he touched be passed on to the future generations struggling with mental illness and addictions, seeking help from the Brattleboro Retreat. Thank you. <laughs>